stay dandy, baby. In the latest episode of Boruto Naruto Next Generations, there are ninja who are fighting in the sewers. And as much as I would love for this to be something of a crossover with the TMNT, no, it is something equally as badass. It's Kakashi versus Caution. Koji. Hello, my friends, and welcome to another review of the Boruto Naruto Next Generation's anime series. Before we jump into today's review, let's go ahead and do that YouTube algorithm thing where if you like my content, please hit the like button. If you're not already subscribed, please join the channel for tons of other reviews and videos and discussions and even the weekly podcast that we do right here called The Powerful Nerdcast. Make sure to stay tuned for all that goodness. If you guys want to go that extra mile, though, please consider checking out my Patreon page where you can make a small monthly donation. Remember, first-time donators, I'll review an anime series of your choosing. But let's go ahead and jump into this review of Boruto Naruto Next Generations. I'm actually going to be briefly talking about two episodes here because I didn't have an opportunity to talk about the last one. So that's what today is all about. So I've said it before and I'll say it again, I think one of the biggest strengths of the Boruto anime series is its ability to not only adapt a long-running manga series, but to also build upon it. And they've been doing that a lot with the Kara arc by bringing in all of these brand new villains and giving them interesting backstories and new details about their background and how they actually joined the organization. We already saw that with characters like Victor, who had his variant arc dedicated to him, which I really appreciated because he did Jack and shit in the manga version of Boruto, and they started to do it a little bit more with the character of Boro, and that's what we get to see in the latest episode of the series, which thankfully goes back to that whole cult aspect thing that they started to drive home with that character, something which did not exist at all in the manga version, and I was really kind of hoping they'd go a little bit further with it, but they pretty much managed to wrap it up all in the entirety of this single episode right here, where Kona Harmaru and Sai decide to investigate Boro's cult, which does not end up going well at all, as they simply just want to learn a little bit more about Boro's connection to the car organization and how this can get them even closer to stopping this evil group. But of course, there are a couple of people who are involved with Boro's cult which are incredibly corrupted by his power and his abilities, one of them being this one dude who looks dangerously close to a KKK member. Don't trust the guys with the pointed hoods. They never turn out to be nice guys at all. And essentially, this guy is there to protect protect all his secrets, and we get to learn that apparently this cult is also where Boro was cultivating this virus, which he used to sort of, like, sway everyone's mind and join his entire cult. We also get to see that apparently this was also an excuse to bring in people to experiment on them, use them as living test subjects, so they could find someone who could be compatible with the karma. This is really interesting because, again, it explains something which is completely unexplained in the manga version. Did it need to be said out loud? No, we just could have assumed that the car organization was going around around and kidnapping people, especially young children, and trying to experiment on them. But this again just drives home the fact that these guys are really fucked up and they'll go about many different means of trying to do what it is that they're actually trying to do. But basically this entire episode just amounts to Sai and Konohamaru just getting a little deeper to the truth and when they finally get there, basically shit just hits the fan. Because as soon as they start to learn something, suddenly Delta arrives and just starts Iron Manning her way through this massive cult and blowing it up with her laser eyes. As ridiculous as that sounds, it's honestly pretty cool. They not only managed to build upon Boro, but also Delta just showing how destructive she is, and it's always great to see more of her character in action, and it also confirms with uh, at least Sai and Konoharmaru that yes, she is indeed alive. They don't know the means of how that's actually done quite yet with the fact that she has multiple cyborg bodies, but it's a pretty crazy scene overall when she just comes in and just completely wrecks the joint Ultraman style. I really did like that scene quite a bit, although I will say that most of the episodes so was kind of disappointing, and I felt that maybe they could have gone further with some of these characters that were devout followers of Boro, because even when they're presented with absolute evidence that Boro was just a total dick, they still managed to just, you know, get swayed by some dude who's saying, no, Boro knew the way, he knew the light, he was preaching the good word of the infinite Tsukiyomi, and then it all just ended up biting them in their white-robed asses, and they all end up getting destroyed by falling rubble and all types of other things, and there's like barely any survivors of the cult at the end of the day, and then we get to see that they basically didn't get to learn all that much, aside from confirming that yes, Delta is still alive. I will say, though, that it was kind of cool seeing Konoharmaru inside do something, even though they really didn't get 
to do all that much aside from walk around and be really schmaltzy and smarmy when they were going after the one dude with the KKK hood. I have to say that that was at least kind of satisfying, but I was kind of hoping maybe we'd get to see a cool battle of them teaming up against Delta, and unfortunately it doesn't really get to happen. And if you were expecting some other big art involving, uh, you know, Boros Colt, well, sorry, you're not going to get it. But otherwise, I thought it was a good episode, which again is, is world-building, expanding on the lore of Kara and their deep connections to all these various parts of the world. The latest episode of the series is another one that is, again, brand new material, but ties directly into some of the key events which are actually happening in the manga, and I really like this one, as it brought back my favorite character of the series, Kakashi. Every single time he's on screen, I'm a pretty happy boy. I mean, it instantly makes me love the episode. Yes, I'll admit, I'm very biased whenever there is an episode which involves Kakashi, but I do like that he's actually teaming up with the next generation Inashika Cho, which I thought was awesome, as they're trying to investigate Kashi and Koji himself, who's still making his way through the village and doing mysterious things. And this mysterious thing in this episode is he's trying to find some intel on some of the ninja from the previous Great Ninja War. You know, Shika Cho tries to capture Kashi and Koji, and they made it seem like they actually might have actually done it at first, but of course it's a shadow clone. Then you get Kakashi and Kashi and Koji, and they're hanging out in this like secret area where all these scrolls and digitized codes are, and they have this short little scuffle, and I mean really freaking short, but it's honestly kind of cool to see, to be perfectly honest, and Kashi and Koji man ends up making another escape because... That's just what the dude does. He's the magic man. Now, the reason this entire scene is important, especially with just seeing Kashi and Koji in the village again, is why aren't the big alarms going off? I mean, what's the deal here? How is this guy able to sneak into Konoha Village in the first place? Well, young Shikadai, of course, being the brood of Shikamaru, inherited a lot of his gray matter and has basically put two and two together, realizing that his chakra signature must already exist in Konoha Village, which basically says that Kashi and Koji is a shinobi from Konoha Village. Now, of course, manga fans know exactly what this is all about, and I'd love to hear your speculation, anime-only watchers, uh, but if you put the pieces of the puzzle together, you're probably going to start to see something of a pretty standard answer here. But again, that's all answers for another day. The biggest shock of the episode, however, is when Kashi and Koji returns to Kara headquarters, and this is where we get the very big reveal that he's working directly with Amato, and apparently they have a secret motive, which is to take out Jigen. For what reason is completely unknown. The point is Amato points out to Kashi and Koji that Jigen's taken basically a little chakra nap and this is the perfect opportunity for this masqueraded dude to come in here and massacre his ass. I think it's going to be pretty awesome, and as you can see for the preview for the next episode, things are certainly only going to intensify. I always think it's really awesome when there's discourse amongst a group of villains. I love watching villains fight villains. I don't know why. It's just something that I think is really interesting and kind of cool, and basically what I'm saying is stay tuned. The next couple episodes are going to rock. So what's the rundown on the latest episode, or really the latest episodes of Boruto Naruto Next Generation's great expansion on the manga material and yet we're already moving headlong into the next major part of the series which continues to shock me we are so close to the actual current manga storyline that i'm really surprised they're not going to try and introduce more filler now i'm not necessarily complaining or anything it's just there are a lot of opportunities for them to sort of build on things and maybe give us like a nice little five episode filler arc but no they're just managing to slightly build upon these events before we move on to the next major one and in many senses that's very cool on the one hand, it sucks because eventually we are going to catch up to that point where we're just not going to be able to go that much further, and we are going to be bombarded with a lot of filler. It's it's the type of episode that makes me wish that Boruto was a seasonal anime and didn't have to end year-round, but, you know, they gotta make that merchandise money. That's what it's all about, baby. Otherwise, I thought both of these episodes brought some pretty good things to the table. I actually ended up liking the previous episode a lot more despite the fact that it didn't feature Kakashi. I just really liked the whole aspect of Boros Cult and getting to see Sai and Konoharmaru like, do something together. It's an interesting combination and I wish they could have done a little bit more with it, especially with the expansion on some of his followers. Maybe some of them could have had really crazy abilities and there could have been a big epic fight scene. But no, they all get crushed by rubble and Delta comes in and destroys things with her giant laser eyes. That's pretty much all it's about. But the next episode was interesting, if only because, you know, more caution Koji. I think anything with his character is really awesome. And, I mean, the best thing about the episode, without a shadow of a doubt, has got to be the final scene of the episode with the big reveal that they are indeed working against Jigen and want to kill his freaking ass. That alone is a pretty big deal and definitely is what makes this episode worth seeing. It's one of those episodes that, at first, might seem skippable, 
but the end stinger makes it so that you kind of have to check it out to see what's going to be happening next. Otherwise, when the next episode begins, you're going to be like, huh, what the hell crawled up Caution Koji's ass to the point where he wanted to kill Jigen? Of course, we don't have any solid answers for any of that yet, but there's some pretty big things going down. I will say that the preview got me excited, but it is kind of spoilery in some of the, the big details that are going to happen, but I'm going to look the other way because I'm continuing to be entertained by both of these episodes, and I'm going to give both of them a 4 out of 5. I thought they were solid material, really for the fans of the series. I don't think these episodes are going to win over any new people, but if you're continuing to enjoy this story and want to see how the world is expanding, how they're expanding on the Kara and their organization and how there's going to be a lot of like conflict in that group, I think this is going to be the episodes for you. But again, I mostly make these reviews because I want to hear from you guys so make sure to sound off in the comment section below telling me what you thought about these latest episodes of Boruto Naruto Next Generation thank you guys so much for watching this review I'll see you all next time and as always stay down there baby